Welcome, and this video is going to be a little bit longer, so you may want to use the pause button now and then after you do different sections of it. So the idea here is we're going to build a spreadsheet, and uh, this spreadsheet you can add on to. We're going to use it for Unit 7, Unit 8, and Unit 9. You'll see across the bottom here I have different tabs, Unit 7, 8, uh, 8B, and then I have a couple for 9 as well. Right now we're just going to work on Unit 7. The idea here is this spreadsheet does everything we need to do in Unit 7, whether we're looking up a Z value, looking up a percent, uh, solving a problem, so we have less than, greater than, between, and what I call percent backwards problems. Uh, and the way it's set up, I use pretty standard um, Excel formatting. So all of the yellow cells that you see, those are user inputs. That's where I have to put the information in. And then all of the green are the outputs or the answers. So let's go ahead and start building this. So we're going to get to a blank screen. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put in some type of actual label. So I'm going to put unit 7. And then we have uh, the first thing we learned was to look up a Z value. So look up a Z value. And we're going to get a percent. I'm going to get percent. Uh, so the next thing I'm going to do is label my inputs. So uh, I need to put in a Z value. So that's going to go here. And then in we'll make B yellow. So I'm going to go up to my little paint thing and paint that yellow. You may have to choose the arrow and pick the yellow. And we'll change the green as well. And then we have the Z value. Um, so And then we're going to get a percent but we're going to get it in the form of a decimal. So I'm going to label that. Okay, And that's going to be green because that's an output. So there's my first green cell. And I notice this is getting a little um, overlap here, so I'm just going to double click, make this a little wider. You double click on the line in between the A and the B, and that will widen out A so that everything fits and doesn't overlap. Okay. Um, now, the next thing, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and, and fill this one in. So I have just some, some dummy number. I have 0 .033. That's a Z value. Uh, that didn't come from anywhere. I just kind of grabbed it and made it up. Uh, I also want to put some borders on this. Uh, borders, all borders. Just makes it look a little neater. Now, I do have to put my formula in here to get it. And if you recall, the formula was norm.s.dist. So put norm.s.dist. Okay, and then it asks for the Z value, and I'm just going to click on this cell minus B3, and then I'm going to put true, because it is cumulative, and there's my answer, 16239. Now, you may be showing more decimal places, and again, you can go up top here, and uh, this will increase decimal, decrease decimal, so if you have too many decimals showing and you want to get it down, I like to set mine to four, because that's usually what I ask for in the exams. Okay. My next section was to look up a percent and get a Z value. So that's what it is. So I'm going to need to put a percent in here. That's input, so I'm going to make that yellow. And then my answer is actually going to give me a Z value. So that's an answer, so I'm going to make that green. And again, I'll put some uh, borders around it just to make it look pretty. Now, uh, my sample that I use is 0 0.99. That's my percentage. Uh, we might want to put this enter as a decimal, just to remind us. And then our Z value, that was norm.s.inv. So norm.s.inv. And it just asks for the probability. So I'm just going to point to, in this case, B6, close parenthesis. And this one I'll also make four decimal places. One, two, three, four. That's good. And on to the next one. So the next thing we're going to do is essentially uh, less than, greater than. We're going to have a whole section here. Between, remember we had uh, the two numbers with between, and then what I call percent. Backwards problem. This is going to be a little bit of work here. So the first thing we need is what x are we looking for? So I'm going to actually put it looking for on here. The next thing we're going to need is a mean. We're going to need a standard deviation. 
we may actually need a second x. So I'm going to leave all that as between. If we're looking for a between question, we'll need two x's. And then percent backwards. So percent backwards. We're going to need, these are all inputs. Okay. So I'm going to label all of these as inputs. I'm going to make them yellow. I'm going to put some borders around them. I'm going to put some dummy numbers in here. So let's just say um, the number I had was 750. The mean was 1,000. The standard deviation was 100. Um, let's just say I'm looking for 1,100 for this one. Again, these are all just numbers I'm using to test these. Now, obviously, if you're looking for a less than, you don't need the in-between or the percent backwards. If you're looking for an in-between, you would need both x's and the mean and the standard deviation, but you wouldn't need the percent backwards. And if you're looking for the percent backwards, you wouldn't need x or x2. But there's no harm in leaving the data there because my outputs are all going to be separated anyway. So the first thing I'm going to do is if I have a less than problem, I'm going to put an answer here. If I have a greater than problem, I'm going to put my answer here. If I have a between problem, my answer will go here. And if I have a percent backwards, but there's two kinds, this is going to be uh, x is less than this. And if I have a percent backwards, x is greater than this. So these are all the possible uh, questions that I might get. The idea is once I've built this spreadsheet, I can go through, do the homework, do the quizzes, or do the exam. Using this spreadsheet, I don't have to type these formulas over and over again. So let's get to it. This was uh, less than is a standard. Okay, if my mean is 1,000 and my standard deviation is 100, what is the probability that uh, we have less than 750? So, okay, well, the way I would do that is norm dot dist the normal distribution what is the x i'm looking for well that's 750 but i'm not going to type 750 i'm going to click on b10 this way i can change the number and do another problem what is my mean well that is found in b11 what is my standard deviation that's found in b12 and is it cumulative true or false well unlike uh chapter six or unit six all of these are true. So you never have to worry about is it true or false. They are all just true. Okay. So there's my answer. Uh, I'm going to format this yellow and get them to four decimal places after I get them all in. Now, if I want greater than, if you recall, all I had to do, if I want greater than 750, I look up less than 750 and subtract the answer from one. So all I have to do is take this one equals one minus, point to this one up here. And get my answer. Okay. And if I want between, well, between was just two less thans, right? And it was the, the larger less than minus the smaller less than. Okay. So I can and it can do it either way, by the way. I can I can use an absolute value and you can do the smaller minus the larger so the same thing if you use an absolute value. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna type in, I'm gonna use an absolute value. So that it doesn't matter which one I subtract from which one. Now I already have one. Um, I already have one less than, and it's it's right here, right? It's in this it's in this cell already. So I'm going to start with that one, and then I'm going to subtract. I don't have the second one, so I have to do it. My D I S T. But now my X is in this B13. But the mean is the same. Standard deviation is the same. So I'm just going to point to those, and it's still cumulative. So what I've done here is I've said, okay, this answer tells me less than 750. I want to, I want to then calculate the probability of less than 1,100 and subtract the two. I'm going to take the absolute value because if I don't take the absolute value, I may get a negative number, and I don't want a negative number. This should do. I found a typo in your formula and trying to correct it. ABS. Uh, Actually, that's not right. I think I missed a parenthesis. Yeah, I got it. Thank you. Um, B17 norm DIST. True, true. Ah, I did. Uh, yep, I missed a parenthesis on the end. Oh, confusing. So this parenthesis ties to this one here, and then the red one is in the inside. That should work now. Now, well, gotta be careful with the parentheses. Okay. Moving on to the backwards problems, if you recall, this is norm.inv. Norm.inv. 
And what does it ask for? Well, it asks for the probability, which I now have in B14. It asks for the mean, which is still up here. And it asks for the standard deviation, which is here. Easy enough. Problem solved. Okay, now backwards greater than, you can't just subtract, you can't just go up to B19 here and then subtract it from 1, because this isn't a probability. This is an X value. So there is no complement here. So what we're looking for, the complement has to be in the formula. So if we want to know um, less than 99% is here, right? If I want greater than 99%, then I need to take what is greater than, what is less than that, right? So greater than 99% would be less than 1%. So I need less than 1%. If you follow me on that, there's my complement. So norm.inv, but now I need to put the complement. So I put 1 minus this because I want greater than that, not less than that. Now I still have the same mean. I still have the same standard deviation. I close parentheses. So notice my 1 minus is embedded in the formula here for this one. Okay. And I get my answer. Now I'm going to take these. I'm going to set them all to four decimal places. Oop, that was three. Okay. Then I'm going to make them yellow. Then I'm going to put some boxes around them. And now I am pretty much, I am pretty much done with this. Oh, these aren't green. These are answers. I'm sorry. These should not be yellow. These should be green. I knew it looked a little off. There it is. They should be green because they're answers. Now I know any place that's yellow is where I have to put data in. Any place that's green, those are my answers. Everything is labeled. The top section is going to give me my lookups. My Z value look up, my percent look up. Then I'm going to have all my norm.dist and norm.inv problems are going to be solved here. So what you can do when you're building your spreadsheet, uh, you can use this video to check your numbers and see if they're the same as mine. And then you can also use it on the practice homework and check your answers there as well. Good luck.